Hello everyone. I am Dr. Shin Young Yim. This time, I will talk about selective peripheral denervation for cervical dystonia. Cervical dystonia is a painful condition in which the neck muscles contract involuntarily, causing the head to twist or turn to one side. Cervical dystonia can also cause your head to tilt forward or backward uncontrollably. Many people with cervical dystonia also experience neck pain that can radiate into the shoulders and arms. It can also cause headaches. A jerking motion of the head, called a head tremor, may also occur. Many people experience difficulties in activities of daily living and might avoid interpersonal relationships. The symptoms of cervical dystonia can be exhausting and disabling. In video number 149, I talked about the symptoms and causes of cervical dystonia. In terms of treatment of cervical dystonia, there are non-surgical medical treatments, surgical treatments along with physical therapy. In video number 150, I went over the medical treatment of cervical dystonia, such as oral medicines and botulinum toxin injection. Some patients do not respond to oral medications and the botulinum toxin injection. Surgery is considered for this case. Deep brain stimulation and selective peripheral denervation are mostly done in surgical treatment for cervical dystonia. In video number 151, I talked about deep brain stimulation for cervical dystonia. Now, I am going to talk about selective peripheral denervation. Selective peripheral nerve denervation is a surgical method that finds the peripheral nerve that controls the muscle causing cervical dystonia and selectively cuts the peripheral nerve so that the muscle does not contract. For example, if the semispinalis cervicis muscle causes cervical dystonia, selective peripheral denervation selectively cuts and destroys the peripheral nerves that control the semispinalis cervicis muscle. Let us go over the indications for selective peripheral denervation. It can be used in patients with cervical dystonia who do not respond to oral medications or botulinum toxin injection therapy. Let us talk about how to do selective peripheral denervation. Among the muscles causing cervical dystonia, surgeons usually select two to three muscles that are the most problematic. They selectively cut the peripheral nerves that control these muscles. The muscles most used for selective peripheral denervation are the sternocleidomastoid muscle, splenius capitis, and splenius cervicis. The levator scapulae muscle, which elevates the scapular and bends the neck toward the shoulder, is another muscle for which selective peripheral nerve denervation is usually performed. The upper trapezius muscle is one of the muscles chosen in selective peripheral denervation. Let's look at the effects of selective peripheral denervation. In most studies, selective peripheral denervation has been reported to have effectiveness. This is a study from the Mayo Clinic. Selective peripheral denervation was performed in 168 patients with cervical dystonia. 58 to 77 percent of the patients who underwent selective peripheral denervation report that symptoms of cervical dystonia have improved significantly. Among them, 58 to 81 percent of the patients report that the pain has improved significantly. 5 to 16 percent reported no effect at all. 7 to 19 percent of the patients said there was no improvement in pain. Let us look at the side effects of selective peripheral denervation. Re-innervation and recurrence of symptoms occurred in 29% of patients, leading to re-operation in 26%. In 51% of patients, there was a change in the pattern of cervical dystonia after selective peripheral denervation. Furthermore, in 13%, the dystonia progressed to other areas of the body. Despite aggressive surgery with selective peripheral denervation, disease pathophysiology takes over indicating that selective peripheral denervation remains far from a cure. Although selective peripheral denervation usually yields a satisfactory result in most patients, cervical dystonia may recur because of either re of the denervated muscles or disease progression to neck muscles that were not previously denervated. This is a Korean report from 2015. The recurrent patients with prior selective peripheral denervation for cervical dystonia experienced improvement from subsequent deep brain stimulation. Today I talked about selective peripheral denervation for cervical dystonia. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.